Today we're gonna to be making one of my favorites growing up that my grandma used to make for me. We're gonna be making carne con nopales. I literally can eat this dish two to three times a week. It just brings me back and it's very delicious. To go over our ingredients, we're gonna need some beef chuck steaks. Now, if you go to a Mexican grocery store, they call this beef steak de diez mil, or they'll just have diez mil on the signs. Diez mil de res, a couple other names. But all this is really is just a chuck roll sliced into steaks. Now, we're not gonna be using this whole thing. I'll probably use maybe about one to two, probably two of these steaks here. And of course, we're gonna be needing some nopales, some cactus. So if you don't know what nopales are, it, it, this, it's a cactus that grows pretty much on the northern border. I don't know how far, but uh, I see these very often here where I live in Southern California. Um, if you go to a local grocery, like Mexican grocery store, you can find these like these in packs already with the pricklies taken off, or you'll, you could buy them in singles, but those most likely will have the pricklies on there and you'll just have to cut those out. But this is all it is, it's just a prickly leaf. And I remember vividly, my grandma would go outside every other morning and she would cut her off a leaf, a new leaf that you know grew on her cactus plant, and she would make up a breakfast. We will also need a half of an onion, two to three Roman tomatoes, depending on how big they are. These were kind of small, so I just went ahead and used three. One bell pepper, one jalapeno chopped, a half of a bunch of cilantro, and two cloves of garlic. And finally, we will need two teaspoons of Mexican oregano. Out of that pack of steaks, I seen this steak here. This one's Kind of thick, it's got a you know, pretty decent amount of meat. Now when my grandma used to make this, she didn't make it with a bunch of meat in there. Actually, especially like in the 90s, she was already getting older, so she was just like on social security, so she wasn't buying a lot of meat. She would make a lot of her dishes with just like a lot of vegetables. So all we're gonna do with this is we're just gonna season this with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. With a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of garlic powder. Pat that in. Now I'm gonna season both sides and we'll get our pan ready. In a large skillet, we are going to turn on our heat to about medium high heat. Then on a little bit of cooking oil. Now we're gonna let this come to temperature. A little bit of moisture on our spoon. If you see this, that means our pan is up to temp. Now let's go ahead and get our steak and sear it. Now we're gonna let this go for about two to three minutes just to get a nice sear and then we'll see what the color looks and then we'll remove it and then we'll get on with the rest of the ingredients. Okay, after about two to three minutes, we're gonna go ahead and flip. We got a nice sear on that beef. Now the same thing, we're gonna let this go for about another two to three minutes. Now after a couple minutes on this other side, got a nice sear on that other side, we're gonna go ahead and let some of these juices out into the pan, we'll put it to the side. Now we're gonna reduce our heat to medium heat. Once the oil's calmed down a little bit, we'll add in our nopales. Now the reason why I'm putting the nopales in there first is because there's a lot of moisture in nopales. So we kind of want to let some of that release before we add any of the other ingredients. So it will take a little bit just to kind of cook it out, but uh, we'll let these go for a few minutes. Make sure that they're evenly distributed. All right, let that go for a couple minutes. Okay, give this a stir. You can tell that the nopales are already giving out their, their juices. You can see it's kind of getting kind of like a sticky, like corn syrup type texture. That's, that's the juice from the nopales. Let's go for a little bit more. Then we'll add in the rest of our ingredients. Okay, after a few more minutes of cooking our nopales, you can see that they changed color from that bright green color to kind of like more of a yellowish color. Now we're gonna be adding in our tomato, bell pepper, onion, jalapeno, and cilantro. Now we're gonna give this a mix. And we wanna saute this to where those tomatoes start to break down and release all its juices along with, you know, cooking the onion. You want this kinda, kinda like soupy a little bit. Uh, you want a lot of juice out of this, and you know what, when it all comes together, it's really flavorful. So since the vegetables shocked our temperature on the pan, we'll go ahead and let that come to temperature. Okay, we'll season with just a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. Mix that in. All right, so we're gonna let this go for a couple more minutes and see how those tomatoes are going. We'll stir it occasionally. Now what we wanna do at this point is just kinda like slow cook those tomatoes so that way they can kinda start making a sauce with their own juices and everything. As you can see, the tomatoes are doing their magic. They're starting to break down, and make like a nice sauce out of this. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna be pressing in two cloves of garlic. Just like that. Okay, give that garlic a mix. Incorporate that flavor all over. We're looking good. I'm gonna let this go for a couple more minutes. I still got some tomato that needs to break down. 
All right, so now that we released a lot of those juices from those tomatoes, we're gonna be crushing in some our oregano. Give that a mix. It's smelling really good. If you want more of a beef flavor, you can add some Norse beef bouillon into this, but uh, I think with the beef and the, the fat that we rendered out of it, it should be good. Okay, now we'll add in our beef that we chopped up. Mix this in well. Okay, I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. Yeah, because you want this real juicy. You want to be able to get a tortilla and just scoop up all these flavors. Okay, now that we have the beef in there, I'm gonna let this go for just a couple more minutes. I want some of those flavors just to kind of extract into the meat, along with allowing some more of that beef flavor to get into the broth of this little stew here. Okay, so right now all we're doing is just checking for seasoning. Get a little bit of juice, and then, as always, season to taste. So I'm gonna see what this needs. All right, so it does need some salt. Add a little bit of salt. I'm do a couple pinches, then give it a mix and see where we're at. It's looking good. Let's try it now after we put some of that salt. All right, so that we're good there. As always, season to salt to taste. So I'm gonna put this on low. I'm gonna smash some beans. You know what? This is breakfast burrito worthy. I am totally gonna make a taquito out of this. So. Let me heat up some beans and we'll get into the taste test. All right, so we got a tortilla all nicely heated. Lay down a nice portion of our beans. Now I do have this. This was one of my recent videos. This is obviously a different batch. We already went through all those beans, but uh, if you wanna learn how to do beans uh, from scratch, uh, I'll, I'll, link, I'll have that video at the end. Spread it around. Okay, now we'll add in a nopal con carne. Got a little bit of extra pieces of meat in there. So give it some love. To finish it all off, a salsa de chile de árbol. I don't think I have this recipe on my channel. You know what? If you guys want to, if you guys want this recipe, let me know in the comments section, and uh, I'll make it. This has actually been one of my favorite salsas, especially for like breakfast burritos. It is a little on the spicy side, but you know I have some tips to kind of make it where it keeps that true, pasty chile de árbol salsa, and it's not so spicy. And Roll it up, pull back, fold up. You can fold up again. There you go, folks. A breakfast burrito is ready to eat. This always takes me back to my grandma cooking in the kitchen. Really good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's fresh, savory, a little, just a little kick, and then that salsa de chile was kind of coming in at the end. Some really delicious stuff. If you're new to my channel, consider hitting the subscribe button that we can see future videos just like this. And I got these recipes, they're really good. You should try them out. Now, God bless and be beautiful.